All righty, everyone. Well, welcome back to the WDF Gold event that is the Sea Coast Open 2021. We had Jules Van Doggen coming out on top in the men's bracket. Right now, we've got the girls towing the hockey here in this uh, girls 501 event. As we've got Asia Jalbert and uh, Taylor Almeida. Hopefully, we said that right. Thanks for joining us here on USA Darts. Proud to give you this coverage here of this youth event. Uh, we do have the females still playing their uh, their event. We'll have that coming up here shortly after this one. And I believe the boys are actually in action in the other room right now. So should be a good final. Asia Jalbert is a phenomenal shot. I mean, uh, really a nice looking uh, follow through that she's got here. Just a uh, heads up, this is a first to three here on these uh, these legs. These two ladies. Asia out of the main area. Something uh, to say about her is that both her dad and her mother play. And they're good, they're good players too. Taylor, I believe she's a local player here. I think she had a Dunkin' Donuts run yesterday. So, she's like, yeah, I know exactly where to go. So, I think she's a local player here. They're just scoring 43 to leave herself with a 32 look. We'll see what she can do here. There we go, make a little mic adjustment so you can hear me a little bit better. Helps when you actually put the mic in front of your mouth. Ooh, tough look there for Asia. Taylor's got a phenomenal follow through too. I'm kind of just looking at those throws. Maybe a youngster on the rise, but I know Asia's been playing since she was a very, very young. Um, with both her mom and dad playing, they taught her at a young, young age. Fortunately not getting the check out there that she would have hoped for. There's some more board calls in the background. As we get to the point in the evening where we'll have our finals or semifinals coming our way for the females. And then we have the doubles men's event going on. Let me have a look at the draw this evening. Probably won't stream any of that look at the draw. We did stream uh, the blind draw last night just as some extra coverage as it was Jeff Smith, Gary Lavoie coming out on top in that one. If you want to go back and take a look at that.
And there it is as Asia gets that leg. After a couple misses on those doubles, that's okay though. It's gonna happen from time to time. It's 8.41 p.m. on the East Coast here in Andover, Massachusetts. Central time, 7.41 over in uh, Cali, 5.41. Appreciate you joining us wherever you may be for this WDF Girls 501 event. Take a look at the uh, women's event real quick and pull that up, see where we're at in that bracket. All righty, looks like we're waiting on Cali West, Teresa Kwan. The winner of that will face Paula Murphy. And for the other match is Marlies Keel taking on Danny Warmack in the semifinals. Take a look over at the men's doubles cricket event. Like we're already in the quarterfinals. Shane Kohi. Francisco. Darren Young. Rolfing. And then Chris Johnson and Joshua Beauford are already advanced in the top four. Bruce Robbins, Jim Widmeyer are in the top eight, waiting on. Danny Baggish, Jeff Smith, Ryan Mooningham, Jules Van Doggen match. Below that, it's Bill Shepard, Steve New, taking on Kevin Luke and Seth Stefano. The winner will advance to play on Peter Stewart Jr. and Joey Lenaw. Asia pulling off the uh, second leg there. She makes it 2-0 in her favor. Currently throwing a 50.10. Taylor throwing a 43.35. Respectable stuff. Choosing to go for the 19s is Taylor. Big 93 there. And Asia stomps right back with a 60. Another one. Huge ton 40 there for her.
Lisa Emers and Shoot Well Asia. Terry Trenholm, hello, how's it going? Sorry, folks, finally pulling up that chat after doing some investigative work on where we're at in the brackets on the other events. Let us know where you're tuning in from. As we've already decided one of those WDF gold spots at the lakeside as Jules Van Doggen's earned his spot to play at the iconic venue that is the lakeside. That's a little raspy for a little Richard, but that'll work. For another 19 here, 57 scored for Taylor, bringing her down to 250. And that'll make it 74 for Asia, so trip 14. Ooh, unfortunate. Fall into the 11. Scrambles on over to the 13, pegs that, so 43 scored will leave her 50. We have a nice setup shot here with Taylor back on 250. I think no matter the outcome here, Taylor's got to take this as a learning experience. Asia's been around the block quite a few times here. She uh, is that inside? It is. Wow, I certainly looked in. But then, yeah, Taylor's got to take this as a learning experience. Asia's an experienced youth player. She's got numerous Windmount National titles underneath her belt, I believe. Windmount National Championships. I'm pretty sure. At least the youth Windmount National Championships, my apologies, should uh, specify. Take a little closer look at that one. On the 17 route here, that'll leave 102. I think she was going for the 19s, but just missing on the right hand side. Up to the madhouse for Asia. Not going to happen this time. So 74 for Taylor. 14, 20 for Tops. Be a blocker. Let's see if she can put it in. No, she cannot. Tough dart there. So here we go. Asia looking at double two. Can she go up top and snag it? She does. As is Asia Jalbert winning this one. And the WDF Girls 501 Youth Event. Let's see if she wants to have a chat real quick.
Alrighty, well, I asked, and she was not having any of it, so I don't blame her at all. Asia just uh, wasn't feeling the interview side of things, but uh, yeah, so that's how it goes, I'm guessing. But anyways, we're going to check with the tournament staff. We may have the, uh, the uh, women's finals and events coming up here shortly, so hang tight here. We'll have that one uh, coming up here in a moment, folks. Thanks for joining us.
All righty. I think before we do this uh, this women's event, I think we're going to do the boys. So we're going to actually do the boys uh, event. As Caden Anderson and P.J. Stewart kind of warm up here for this WDF boys final. I think these guys are going to mess around anymore. I think they're going to get right to the point. Once again, the ages here. Caden Anderson, 15. P.J. Stewart, 16 years old. And these guys can... Sling with the best of them. Uh, that's Caden's dad, Mark, up there chalking for these guys. Good, uh, good stuff there. Kind of take a look as these guys take their final warm-ups here in this WDF Boys 501 event. Here we go with the diddle as it's going to be P.J. Stewart winning that. So here we go. First to three legs, P.J. Stewart versus Caden Anderson. We've already seen them uh, go a best of 11. It was P.J. winning over Caden. And we're saying these guys don't mess around at all. They just right up to the Aki and chuck away. Looking for a 180. Ooh, 140 instead. Still quality stuff here. Spike that average back up to where it should be. Look at this from Caden. 80 scored there for him. Pun there for P.J. Stewart. Looks like he's going to have the first look at a check out, quite possibly. Big opportunity here for him. 21 will leave at 76. And uh, not an opportunity now, so does Caden go bullseye here? Yep, 32. Oof. Just in the inside, right in the heart of that bull. See if you can look at double tops here. 
Good snag there for him. Takes the first leg of this match. Caden starts off with a good one, but just a little bit better by PJ there. Maybe we had a Maybe a kick of the cam here. Don't know what quite that was. That was a hmm. little weird. Here we go, Caden. Looking for a ton. Not able to split the difference in those two. PJ gonna have the slight advantage in this leg. Looking to break Caden's throw if possible. dart there. Pulls them all the way down to 24 left after a big 1-3-7. PJ Stewart with 24. Unfortunate dart there. It slips into 9, goes ahead and recovers. Leaves himself 8. You see Caden fling his hands in the air, knowing. Could have had a good opportunity there, but he's going to get another look here. Caden Anderson looking at double five inside. One, double two. It's unfortunate those darts are not falling for him into the doubles. That's going to be difficult. He's got to find his way around those two. Yeah, a difficult task indeed. So Caden looking to steal this one away with the double two. Oh. Those are just tough rounds, tough rounds. We've all been there. We've all felt the struggle of trying to check out and just unfortunately not the case here. For a few extra darts than you would have liked or hoped. And there it is for PJ as he goes ahead and covers and hits that. Kind of see him and Caden having a little chat there. These guys have they've played a lot of darts together. They have played a lot of darts together. So I'm sure they're, I'm, I'm, including being on the same team for events. Um, so I'm sure they have a little friendship for sure there. Trip 20, 121 there. Ugh. Looking for that 180 and just not able to clank her in there. Sorry, just pulling up the chats, Jason Tears. Hey, Will, are you hungry? You need to start eating off the kids' menu. That's because of my, couldn't finish some steak tips, apparently, so. I'm getting harassed by this Boston crew up here. 
<laughs> Nicholas tuning in from Leo, Leo Minister, Massachusetts. Had to really break that one down for us. Michael Roberts, hey, hey, hey. And Mark McFadden in the Madhouse. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. If you have not given us a like and follow, definitely do so. It's been a phenomenal uh, couple days here at uh, Seacoast 2021. PJ looking for the decider here, the winning dart, and there it is. As PJ coming out victorious, 3-0 in that one. Just some tough darts from both those kiddos. I mean, what can you do there? A couple missed opportunities at some doubles, but that's how it goes. These guys got a strong future ahead for them. I'm uh, anxious to see where all they go with, uh, with life, honestly. I mean, we'll see how it... Uh, how it turns out as, as dart players. I mean, they're going far already, and they're 15 and uh, 16 years old. So, all righty, folks. Well, we'll hang in there. We got the women's event coming up, those finals. I'm sure we'll be playing those here shortly. So stay tuned, and we'll have it on right here on the USA Darts page.
All righty, folks, just confirming with the tournament staff, it looks like we've got Callie West and Paula Murphy. That is our semifinals match out there in the distance. We're going to go ahead and zoom in on that. And then right next door, we've got a great match in Joey Lanaw, Danny Baggish. We're going to keep it right here so we can see what happens with these teams. Jeff Smith, Danny Baggish taking on Peter Stewart, Jr., Joey Lanaw, and then back there in the distance, that's Paula Murphy, Callie West to decide who plays in the finals. I want to say it's Marlies Keel. Right now that score for the Paula Murphy Callie West match is 4-2 Paula. Ning just won to advance is Paula Murphy. Paula Murphy sitting on 32 right now. And there she does it. Paula Murphy advancing to the finals. We'll have that on the uh, streaming board here momentarily. Hang tight, folks.
All right, it looks like we're going to have our finals of the uh, women's event here. You kind of see them chatting it up here. This is Danny Baggis, Jeff Smith, Joey Lenon, P.J. Stewart. We're going to have the finals here. This is Danny Warmack taking on Paula Murphy. Should be a exciting little final here. Alrighty, here we go. It's going to be the women's final. Paula Murphy taking on Danny Warmack to see who will book a spot at the lakeside. Paula Murphy besting uh, Callie West in that previous leg, or in the previous round. It was a 5-2 scoreline there for Paula. Sorry for the uh, time frame on getting this match over here. We were wondering if we wanted to pull a uh, a men's doubles match or if we wanted to just go ahead and play uh, the finals. So we chose to go ahead and wait on the women's 501 finals because how uh, big the implications are here and uh, earning a spot to the lakeside. So. And this is a pretty good spot to be in because I believe this is number one and number two on the ladies' charts here in the U.S. So this could be a uh, huge decider here. Five scored for Danny. Take it down to 292. Once again, folks, this is the finals of the women's 501 WDF Gold event. First to six legs here. This is a race to 11. Or sorry, first to six legs, best of 11. Let me reiterate that. My apologies. Big ton 40 there for Paula. That'll certainly help. Let us know where you're tuning in from, if you would, folks. We love to hear what part of the country, maybe uh, what part of the world you're coming in from.
Choosing to go downstairs first is Paula as she shakes off that dart. side on that uh, double 15 look. Giving Paul an opportunity at this 80 or 104. What would have been 84 left. Now going to be 64. So here we go. Danny Warmack. Double eight. Or sorry. Double four. Eight left. To win the leg. She drops it into the 13. So Todd, uh, Airdreary, Alberta, Canada. Hopefully I got that right. We'll, we'll see, I guess. Scott Edwards from Detroit, Michigan. The Rock, New York for uh, Mark McFadden. Another double four look for Danny. Not ideally what she wanted to do, giving uh, Paula Murphy opportunity after opportunity to steal this leg away. Eventually she's going to do it if you give her enough looks. Danny Warmack needs to take this out right here. Big darts there for Danny Warmack as she gets that one. Paula gives her a slap on the hand and she's gonna steal that leg away. Okay, break throw and have the throw in this one. Joe Puglio turned in from Haverhill, Massachusetts. Darren Begay turned in from uh, Colorado. Lisa saying, come on, Paula Murphy. Alrighty, over on Facebook, finally pulled up that chat. Or chat. And uh, Karen Scott or Ramachan saying uh, thanks for being this, bringing this live, guys. No problem at all. She's currently tuning in from Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. And RG is from Nova Scotia, Halifax. Thank you for this. Well, appreciate you both tuning in here on uh, YouTube. It's been a great, uh, great event, this Seacoast Open. It's really uh, awesome to have the opportunity to not only stream this event, but to have this event here in North America, a WDF Gold and guarantee a spot at the lakeside for two of these individuals. Jules Van Doggen being one of them who already won over Kevin Luke in the final. Impressive stuff when you've only been uh, really going at this um, level of darts for just over a year, maybe a year and a half. Uh, probably maybe just over a year and a half, maybe two years for uh, Jules. And we're going to find out our other lakeside attendee here.
I'll, uh, does she split that here? Or does she? No, she. Instead of moving around, she splits the difference in between the two. 95 scored. Danny on 186. Got Mike there. We'll check out Paula giving it a throw here. Been taking advantage of those 19s, and of course you have to on a 129. Go up to the top. Not gonna have a chance. 90 left here for Paula Murphy. Michael P. Capone saying smooth and well done, sir. Haver Hill Mass. Well, thank you, sir, for tuning in. Appreciate it. Rick Main, old SDA member. Well, thanks for joining us here, Rick. We appreciate it. Lisa Turner from the Tampa, St. Petersburg. There's 13 scored for Paula. Leaving her 57. 17 is the shot. So here's Danny Wormack looking at 28 to go 2 0 up in this final of the WDF Gold Event. There it is. A big dart. She takes it 2 0. In this race to six legs. Unfortunately, it looks like our finals for the uh, men's double side may be already in effect as Jeff Smith, Danny Baggish are taking on Darren Young and Anthony uh, Rolfing. I'm gonna try to keep an eye on that one. Of course, this is the bigger, the bigger value or bigger, bigger bang for your buck here. All right, had a uh, couple people stop by, say farewell. We all know how that happens, so big trip 19 there from Paula to start off. Danny falling a little bit back in this one. 314 compared to 164. It's been a long day of darts. I have a long couple day of darts. I mean, both of these ladies played in the U.S. Team National event yesterday. That's difficult. A 
now coming out today and playing the long haul of matches here. Tun Tatley saying the Tungsten Tartan Army Headquarters. How's it going, uh, Tun? Hope you're doing well. Thanks for tuning in, buddy. Hopefully life's is treating you well. Looking for a trip 18. Doesn't grab it. So 36 scored. Even 86? No, that's not right. Yeah, that was right. That was right. Hey. I thought for sure it might not be. You'd think she'd go for those 18s there, but double 13 here for Paula Murphy. To grab a leg on the board here. Tough dart, tough dart. She went ahead and split that. I didn't uh, think she was going to do that. Elected to take the first dart at it and split it afterwards. 134 needed for Danny. Brings it down to 93, but Paula Murphy is sitting on double four. And gets it. Snags it with those pear-shaped flights. Two to one, Danny Warmack. Ball has been uh, electing to use the 19s a lot in this match. Fifty-five there for Paula. Danny. Pulling it down to three seventy-six for Danny. This is going to be a gritty match here between these two ladies. Paula not throwing as well as she did in the previous match. Threw a 77 average against Callie West. I think there may be a little bit of nerves on this one. Uh, totally understandable due to the circumstances. I mean, when you're talking a spot at the lakeside, things can get a little bit uh, hectic, as they say. really sticking to those 19s. If it works, it works. Why not continue on? Ton, appreciate it. All good, uh, lad. Great coverage. Enjoyed watching the stream. Thank you, sir. Quality second and third dart. Big 117 will leave her with 54. As Danny doesn't come up with a checkout opportunity, six darts at least for Paula Murphy. And she only needs two. 
quality stuff from Paula there as she pulls out the uh, win in that one, making it 2-2. Two, two. Again, choosing the 19s as her preferred route. When she's on, though, she's on. She's collected two on the spin here. She's climbed her average as she uh, kind of had an iffy first leg. Pam Olive saying way to go, Jeff and Danny. So I believe they already played that final there. We'll go ahead and take a look here in men's doubles cricket. As yes, it's Danny Baggish, Jeff Smith coming out the victors over, over uh, Darren Young and Anthony Roloff, or Rolfing, sorry, 2-0. Three twenty one needed for Danny. Stays up there on the twenties, just sixty scored. These the ladies gotta be feeling the energy or the stamina from there that they're usually pretty good at. It's kinda Diminished a little. So many darts played over the last couple days, it's kind of hard not to. I think this is easily going to be the biggest match for Danny Warmack's career to this point. If she can plow in uh, a victory here. It would mean an awfully lot to her. We may uh, see a tear or two in the interview. Certainly could be the case. Paula just missing out on a flight there. Take a closer look at that double 15. So 10, double 10. Outside as well. So 141 here for Danny. Tough out, but doable. Not going to be the case now. One seventeen leaves twenty four for Danny, and there it is for Paula Murphy right in the double ten. So we see Danny step right up and go right to work again, trying to do a quick, quick brush off. Here, boy, 35, please. 
go three looking at those 19s per usual in this match she's she hasn't taken many looks at the at the 20 bed I mean but what's what's been working has been working for her so she's crawled back into this match being 2-0 down crawled all the way back 3-2 up now Danny, if she can pull a big triple here. Goes downstairs, can't find it. So 59 there for her, uh, pulls her down to 194. That's a great dart there for Danny. She's got to build off of it. Can't do it just a ton. Still a pretty good number though. No, it's an 81, my apologies. So that'll pull her down to 113. Not as good as she was hoping. That would have pulled her down to 94 for the ton. Seven here. These were the 82. A big hit, dead center of the bowl, leaving her 32 left. Great shot there for Paula Murphy. So this becomes a crucial hit here for Danny. She's going to have to go trip 19 and doesn't find it. She snags it there with the second dart. She'll lead this 4-2 with two legs needed to be victorious. Danny of late has been a little bit sporadic on the uh, 20s, per se. Just having a little bit of trouble finding the triple bed. I mean, I can't say uh, it's not an uncommon thing. We've all been there before. Started off really strong, but the last couple legs has kind of struggled that she's allowed Paula to come back for two. 
She's got to find a little bit of momentum. Needs to have a round or two where she really has some back-to-back -back good numbers. That'll certainly help her her uh, momentum or or uh, help her feel a little bit good about herself. We can see in the background there's Jeff Smith checking out this match after a big win in uh, doubles cricket with Danny Bagish. Paula looking 159. Danny's just got to take a deep breath here and, and try to hit a couple crucial triples if she can. There she's done one. How about another? Oh, a little on the high side, just a ton. Finding that other one would have left her with a checkout. Definitely, it was definitely a higher checkout, but you need to guarantee yourself at least a chance. and. Paula Murphy's just been playing well enough to not give her the opportunity to. So looking for a 60 to leave tops here. She does get that. So she's going to come back with an six darts here. I'm sorry, I guaranteed three more 